Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is following on from a previous video I did on tense timelines, uh, which if you haven't seen already, you can find here, somewhere up here. In that video, we broke down the different tense structures, focusing specifically on the form of each tense. Now this series, I plan to do shorter videos, looking at each tense individually or comparing different tenses, focusing a bit more on the context to try and help you decide specifically when you need to use which tense to be understood clearly. So today the video is focusing on the present tenses, the core present tenses in English, the present simple and the present continuous. So without further ado, let's go. So we're going to look and compare the two different tenses, the present simple and the present continuous. We'll look at some different contexts, I'll give you some examples and hopefully clarify the difference between these two. So first, the present simple. So the present simple you use mainly in the following contexts. When you're speaking in the present in general, when you're speaking about permanent, non-changing situations in the present, and when you're speaking about facts. On the other hand, the present continuous, you use mainly in these contexts, when you're speaking about something now, specifically now, which is in progress, something which is temporary, okay? It's not permanent, the opposite of permanent, temporary. And when you're speaking about trends or developments or things which are changing during the current period of time, maybe not specifically now, but during the current period of time. So the idea is to compare these to, so you can decide, okay, in this context, I need the present simple, and in this context, I need the present continuous. It's not completely exhaustive. If you look in your grammar book, you'll find a few more contexts. The aim of this video is to give you the majority of the information that you need so you can be correct. If you really want to understand every single exception, every single context, then please get in touch and we can discuss that in more detail. So as always, we need some examples to clarify when we use these situations. So for the present simple, when you're speaking in general, it's a common question to ask, what do you do? What do you do? This can be confusing for some people. Now, essentially this question is saying, what do you do in general? So for most people, the response is their job. The question is essentially, what is your job? It's the same if you say, what do you do? And the question in the present continuous would be, what are you doing? What are you doing? Now, the responses to these questions would be very different because they're two completely different questions. So the question, what do you do? You'd respond with your job. So for example, I'm a teacher. So what do you do? I'm a teacher. So a response to the question, what are you doing? Could be, I'm making a video for YouTube. Okay, that's for me now. But what are you doing means specifically at this moment is not necessarily linked to your job. It just means right now, at this moment, what are you doing? What activity is taking place right now? So be careful, you can confuse these. Present simple, what do you do? Means what's your job? What are you doing? What activity is taking place now? Next example, permanent situations. So an example could be, I work in Geneva. Normally where you work, you have a permanent place where you work. Most people don't move around to different places, different locations every day. Most people have one office, one place of work, so it's a permanent situation. So you can say, I work in Geneva or whichever town you work in. But to continue the same sentence, you could then use the present continuous. Let's say, I usually work in Geneva, but I'm working in Bern this week. So here, as you would have seen if you've watched our tense timelines video that I mentioned before, these key words, these adverbs, usually and this week, are the indicators of which tense you need. So I usually work in Geneva, permanent situation, but I'm working in Bern this week, a temporary situation. It's just this week that you're working in Bern, next week you'll go back to your permanent situation in Geneva. So here the tense indicates for us a permanent situation and a temporary situation to make it clear for the listener. Right, the third context for today, facts. 
in comparisons to trends and developments, things which are changing. So our example. So in winter, the weather is cold. Okay, this is a fact. This is always true. So we use the present simple. It's like this. It's always like this. But on the other hand, currently, as I'm making this video, it's the autumn. And I can say currently, the weather is getting colder. The weather is getting colder. So this shows that at the moment, gradually, little by little, the weather is changing. It's not exactly right now at this second, it's over a longer period of time. It's a gradual change which is taking place. So here again, the distinction between facts and trends, things happening over a period of time. As a reminder, the best way to decide which tense you need is to focus on key words and you have these key time references, time adverbs, which help you decide which tense you need. So you don't need to remember necessarily all of this explanation every time, but you do need to remember this keyword means this tense. It's a little shortcut for you. So the words commonly used with the present simple are always, often, sometimes, never. These words are very often used to introduce the present simple. Now, in contrast, the present continuous, the words we often use are now, currently, at the moment, today, this week. Okay, when you're speaking about a temporary situation, which is true just for this specific period of time. Okay, as always with language, it's a little bit more complicated than that. We have some exceptions. And particularly with the present continuous, you have some verbs which are not used in the present continuous form just to make it a little bit more complicated for you, of course. So the list is quite long. I won't give you the whole list now. You can find that on the internet or you can uh, look in a grammar book, or something like that. But to give you some examples, you probably know some already if you're familiar with English. You probably know these instinctively just from having heard English. But to give you some examples, uh, the verb to cost. It's never how much is it costing. It's impossible to use this verb in the present continuous form. It's always, how much does it cost? So to cost is one example. Another cost would be the verb to weigh. It's never, how much is it weighing? It's not possible to use it in this form. Even if logically you might think it's a temporary situation because you can change the weight, it's not possible. It's always, how much does it weigh? Now, a controversial one. So you may have heard the phrase from McDonald's, I'm loving it. Now, if you check your grammar book, the verb to love, it's in the list of state verbs. So technically, this is grammatically incorrect to say I'm loving it. But McDonald's have uh, used this. And if you watch TV in English from native speakers, if you watch series or films, movies, etc., you will hear people regularly saying I'm loving it. So the question now becomes, is it really incorrect? If everybody says it, I suppose it becomes correct. Because who decides these rules? In the end, we decide them unconsciously. And if we say these things, they then become acceptable and correct. So the language is changing. So I'm loving it. If you speak to somebody who's very old school, is very focused on that the grammar book is 100% correct, they'll probably correct you. But if you speak to most native speakers, they won't think you've made a mistake. And they'll think you're speaking very normally if you say, I'm loving this. So for me, it's an interesting one, as you can see that the language is, is changing as we speak. Okay, great. So that's it for today. Present simple, present continuous. I hope that's helped. If you've enjoyed this video, if you've learned something, then please give it a, a thumbs up, a like. And if you have any comments, always feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Subscribe, share with family and friends. All your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.